morning. I'm Therese McFall, and I will be reading Chapter 7, Captain Cook Builds a Nest. Very reluctantly, Janie and Bill had to leave Captain Cook and go to school. Mrs. Popper was busy in the kitchen, rather belatedly, doing the breakfast dishes. And while she dimly realized that the penguin was going in and out of the refrigerator pretty frequently, she thought nothing of it at first. Meanwhile, Mr. Popper had abandoned his telephoning and was now busy shaving and making himself neat in honor of being the owner of such a splendid bird as Captain Cook. But the penguin, though thus neglected for the moment, was by no means idle. With the usual excitement and having to go to the market earlier than usual, Mrs. Popper had not yet got around to straightening the house. She was an excellent housekeeper. Still, with two children like Janie and Bill, and a husband with such untidy ways, there is no denying the fact that she had to pick up the place rather frequently. Captain Cook was now attending to the picking up. Into the corners of every room, he plowed and poked and pecked with a busy thoroughness. Into every closet, he stared with his white circled eyes. Under and behind all the furniture, he crowded his plump figure with little subdued cries of curiosity, surprise, and pleasure. And each time he found what seemed to be what he seemed to be looking for, he picked it up in the black end of his red beak and carried it waddling proudly in his wide pink feet into the kitchen and into the ice box. At last it occurred to Mrs. Popper to wonder what on earth the bird was up to. When she looked she could only scream to Mr. Popper to come quickly and see what Captain Cook had done now. Mr. Popper himself, looking rather remarkable as Mrs. Popper noticed later, joined her in staring with astonishment into the refrigerator. Captain Cook came up too and helped them look. Ark! Ark! he said with triumph. Mrs. Popper laughed and Mr. Popper gasped as they saw the results of Captain Cook's trips through the house. Two spools of bread, one white chest bishop, six parts of a jigsaw puzzle, a teaspoon, and a closed box of safety matches. A radish, two pennies, a nickel, and a golf ball. Two pencil stubs, one bent playing card, and a small ashtray, five hairpins, an olive, two dominoes, and a sock, a nail file, four buttons of various sizes, a telephone slug, seven marbles, and a tiny doll's chair, five checker pieces, a bit of graham cracker, a parcheesi cup, and an eraser a door key, a button hook, and a crumpled piece of tin foil, half of an old lemon, and the head of a china doll, Mr. Popper's pipe, and a ginger cap, an ink bottle cork, two screws, and a belt buckle, six heads from a child's necklace, five building blocks, a darning egg, a bone, a small harmonica, and a partly consumed lollipop, two toothpaste lids, and a very small red notebook. I guess this is what they call the rookery, said Mr. Popper, only he couldn't find any stones to build his nest with. Well, said Mrs. Popper, those penguins may have heathen ways at the South Pole, but I declare I think this one is going to be quite a little help around the house. Or, said Captain Hook, Cook, and strutting into the living room, he knocked down her best lamp. I think, Papa, 
said Mrs. Popper, that you had better take Captain Cook outside for a little exercise. Good gracious, but you're all dressed up. Why, you almost look like a penguin yourself. Mrs. Mr. Popper had smoothed down his hair and shaved off his whiskers. Never again would Mrs. Popper have to reproach him for looking as wild as a lion. He had put on a white shirt with a white tie and white flannel trousers and a pair of bright tan ox blood shoes. He had got out of the cedar chest his old black evening tailcoat that he had been married in and brushed it carefully and put it on too. He did indeed look like a penguin. He turned and strutted like one now for Mrs. Popper, but he did not forget his duty to Captain Cook. Can I have a few yards of clothesline, please, Mama? asked Mrs. Mr. Popper. The end of chapter seven.